energy. It is said that a civilization's level of technological advancement can be measured by the amount of energy it is able to use. At present, our civilization is experiencing huge transition in how we use our energy, a transition that is taking us away from the huge, wasteful power plants of the past and towards a much more sustainable, scalable and renewable future. However, the market appears to have been blindsided about this reality, resulting in a bubble potentially larger than that of 2008's housing crisis, and you all know how that went. Watch this video to get an idea of what you should do before the bubble inevitably pops. First off, when I'm talking about the energy market, I'm referring to electricity generation. That includes legacy power plants like coal, oil, gas, nuclear, biomass and hydroelectric, as well as the disruptive newcomers solar and wind. There is also the currently much smaller energy storage market, which includes batteries, pumped hydro and a number of other systems. As the storage market grows, the unpredictability of solar and wind will become less of an issue, allowing them to become completely dominant. But one question first needs to be answered. Why will solar and wind dominate? I could dedicate several further videos to answer this question alone, but I won't waste your time with that. The long and short of it is that solar and wind are already the cheapest forms of electricity generation in existence, that's present day and with no incentives. This will only get better as more solar and wind systems are built. Not only this, but new solar and wind generation will soon be cheaper than even just maintaining and running existing legacy power plants. As such, the market will naturally transition to using solar and wind almost exclusively, something that has previously been impossible due to lack of energy storage. However, energy storage is now here to stay, and a 100% solar, wind and battery electrical grid is achievable. So what does this mean for conventional power plants? Frankly, the answer to what will happen to legacy power plants is obvious. Consumers will demand the cheaper rates enabled by solar, wind and battery systems, meaning demand for legacy power plants will collapse, eventually to zero. In fact, this is already happening for coal, especially in the UK where coal will be phased out entirely by the end of 2024. This trend will also be seen for natural gas, hydroelectric, biomass and nuclear. These power plants will be increasingly unable to produce electricity at any given time of the day and will end up sitting idly for most of the time. However, even when producing nothing, conventional power plants still have costs, largely around maintenance and eventually decommissioning costs. As such, these power plants are even worse than a typical stranded asset. But why does the market not seem to realise this? To answer this question, one ought to consider a metric of economic viability known as Levelized Cost of Electricity, LCOE for short. LCOE is calculated by taking the net present value of the total cost of building and operating the power plant, and then dividing by the total electricity generation over its lifetime. Or, in more understandable terms, lifetime costs divided by energy produced. Unfortunately, most energy analysts make one huge assumption when calculating LCOE, namely that the uptime of the power plant will always be constant. This uptime is usually assumed to be 80%, i.e. the power plant will be producing power for 80% of the time and not producing anything for the other 20%. However, as I explained earlier, these power plants will be increasingly less economical to run at any time and will eventually be unable to sell any power. This means the uptime will approach zero. As such, the true LCOE for these power plants is significantly higher than what most analysts are projecting. And to be clear, these power plants would normally be expected to run for decades. Even present day market data shows that the uptime for these power plants is significantly lower than 80%. At this point, a new power plant would be lucky to get 20% total uptime. And even this is optimistic. This has created a huge bubble in the energy market that analysts and investors have yet to realise. The non-renewable energy market is worth several trillion dollars, multiple times as large as 2008's housing market. This bubble, when popped, will wreak havoc in the market and the economy. I believe it's important to have a way to protect yourself and, even better, use the crash as an opportunity to make money. So what can you do? Well, I've compared the energy bubble to the housing bubble a couple of times now, but they are in fact quite distinct, in a very important way. The housing bubble was not caused by any kind of competition, but instead grew its own accord. The energy bubble, however, is a result of competition, and damn good competition at that. As such, in this case I would not recommend shorting the energy markets, but instead going long on solar, wind and batteries. The gains achievable going long are much greater than those of being short. So whilst I will not recommend any particular solar, wind or battery company to go with, I will say that I am still all in in Tesla, and Tesla makes both solar panels and batteries. That's just me though, do your own research before investing in any stock. Anyway, that's all I have for this video, I'll see you in the next one, and peace out.